This is Wretched Radio with Todd Friel. Clarity in confusion. This is Wretched Radio, Shepherd's Conference. For my money, the best conference on the planet. Dr. John MacArthur celebrating 50 years of faithful ministry, joined by other men who have been faithful to the gospel for decades. And yet, in the Q&A that was led by Phil Johnson, we saw a pretty, a pretty tense pretty awkward exchange regarding the issue of social justice. Many, 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 many issues will confront you throughout the course of a single day if you're an evangelical who's plugged in. Many of those issues, you can respond pretty quickly. This issue, I think we need to slow our roll and think this through, putting the best construction on everything, striving for unity until we can have some clarity on a subject that is big, unwieldy, and it has the potential to explode not evangelical Christianity, conservative evangelical Christianity. If the people with differing views go at each other with guns loaded and there is ultimately a split, here's what you would see. John MacArthur... Phil Johnson, and those who agree with them, and I do, by the way, on one side, and then you're going to see everybody else who has differing views on different aspects of social justice on the other side. So say goodbye to Al Mohler. Don't listen to Ligon Duncan anymore. Mark Dever, bad. Can you imagine that happening? The devil would shout for joy. Right now, conservative evangelical Christianity, it is growing. While the the bigger gospel coalition thing appears to be struggling right now, and, and, and the amount of people who aren't really conservative kind of make up, I think, a number that is probably exaggerated. Even so, I think conservative evangelical Christianity is actually growing. And that is a good thing. Imagine if that conservative circle were broken because of this issue, because we rushed to judgment. The stakes are very high here, and we are going to offer grace, and we're going to be patient because what we heard at the Q&A was a lot of confusion, and I believe that is our clarity, that we are simply in the process of working this through, and until it is worked through, oh, please, let's not draw lines and draw sides. Let, let's, let's not do that. I, 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 let's, just, let's just for yucks say that some of these guys that have differing views on social issues, let's just say they leap out of the closet and they say, I'm a card-carrying Marxist. <laughs> I believe that the gospel needs to have some sort of message of racial reconciliation or it's heresy. If they do that, there'll be a divide. But until we get to that level of clarity, the confusion is our clarity to cause us to go, I can breathe, I'm just going to slow down a little bit, I'm going to work through this, and that is what we're going to endeavor to do right now. Let's listen to some of the men that were at the Shepherds Conference Q&A. And I think if we can be charitable, I, I think we're going to hear two things. That, that, that some of the fellows that, that some people have been kind of leery about, they dropped plenty of hints that th- they're thinking this through and they're maybe a little bit more conservative on it than what meets the eye. Let me give you a case in point. This is Dr. L. Moeller. I'm afraid we're going to lose an enormous number of, uh, of evangelicals uh, to uh, various kinds of social gospel because that's a lot easier to find satisfaction in than evangelism. That was an excellent statement. You, you take that alone. That was an excellent statement. And if I didn't know who uttered it, I'd say, okay, well, that's a guy that I would probably agree with on all of the aspects of social justice. But, I, and right now, quite honestly, I, 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 I don't have enough clarity from Dr. Moeller to know, but nevertheless, I would listen to that statement and go, yeah, yeah, that's spot on. And yet, he has some different shadings on the issue than other people do. So, so what do I do with it? I applaud that. 
He's right. We're losing evangelicals to a a socially infused gospel. And becoming liberal and doing good is a lot easier than evangelizing. That's an outstanding observation. We can rejoice in that, can't we? Even as we disagree on other issues? Even as it lacks clarity? And I think that's the, the other consideration here. That, that there have got to be some things that are being considered by these men that we are not aware of. Let me give you a case in point. The Southern Baptist Convention has a history. If you go back 150 years, give or take 160 years, the Southern Baptist Convention was the pro-slavery denomination. There was a split, and the Southern Baptists were the people who were for slavery. That's how it began. There were leaders, Southern Baptist Seminary presidents, the founders of it. uh, They were slave owners. There were churches in the Southern Baptist Convention that into the 70s would not allow full membership for black people. I mean, that's, that's kind of profound. And right now, there is a tremendous amount of societal pressure and, I think, pressure from left-leaning social justice people that, 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 that is so crucial in the mind of Dr. Al Mohler that if he biffs it on this, if he doesn't handle this hot potato, and it is a hot potato, if he doesn't handle it rightly, uh, They'll see a split in the Southern Baptist Convention. They'll see a split at Southern Baptist Seminary. Could he? I'm not saying that he is thinking that way, but could he be? And I think the answer is, yeah, he sure could, and that would be to put the best construction on it. Okay, I'm not walking in his shoes. He's feeling a whole lot of pressure. That seminary has grown. He was the one installed to be the conservative leader of it, and he has for decades, and now... He sees the issue, perhaps, I'm speculating, but I hope this is a positive speculation, which I think then gives me the, the liberty to do that because I'm not trying to be critical, just the opposite. He's looking at it and going, if I biff it on this, what happens if I, I get fired and the seminary turns liberal again? Or the denomination splits over this? Uh, he believes, I'm speculating, that it has the power to do that. Would that be a reason that he doesn't want to clarify everything and be nailed down by definitive questions? And I think the answer to that is most certainly a possibility. And so I put the best construction on it and go, okay, he's dealing with stuff I'm not. And that is something I think we need to learn to accept and that we need to be comfortable with, that we can live with some confusion A lack of clarity because what is clear is there's stuff that's swirling that I'm not privy to, I'm not engaged with, but because of the jello, because of the men that we are talking about, we are going to see this thing through, not back down on what we believe is right, but work through it with the goal being unity. Isn't it possible? that Ligon Duncan has some issues that he's dealing with? Isn't it possible? And, and again, I'm speculating, but I hope positively to help this swirling ball of confusion. Mark Dever, he heads up X9 Network. He's pastoring a church. He is in Washington. You could probably throw a rock and hit the White House. That's how close he is. I think he probably has politicians. In fact, he did say that there are some politicians in his congregation. Maybe... He's thinking about them when he's not being very typical Mark Dever-like, very clear, very forthright. Is, is it possible that he's working with some people in the Gospel Coalition and together for the Gospel behind the scenes to bring some clarity to this? And I think the answer to that is, a yeah, that's definitely a possibility. So I'm not going to get frustrated. I'm going to be thoughtful and charitable. T4G was largely created out of the concern that there was confusion over what the gospel is. Right. And uh, confusion, and and by the way, we, I will acknowledge to you that uh, 
that there are clarifications that T4D needs to make with my partners sitting here uh, and will make. What did, he ju- what did he just say? What did he just say? You, maybe you didn't get anything out of that or very little because it seemed to be, to be very nonspecific. Why? I thought he was actually being a gentleman there. Look, I, he said right here, there, there, he, what he basically said is, we've got disagreements right here, Ligon Duncan, Mark Dever, myself, and we've got to clarify that stuff. But he didn't do it when we wanted him to, how we wanted him to, and he didn't do it definitively there. But it's, it's pretty clear he's working behind the scenes, and he's trying to move these pieces to stave off damage and not create damage. Is it possible that we could be charitable in that regard and maintain some unity? I sure hope so. This is Wretched Radio.